Hello and welcome. We're back here in Red Dead Redemption 2 doing some testing on this Razer Blade 18 for 2023 featuring the RTX 2060. I've got it set to full screen resolution here in full screen mode. Everything is set to ultra and I've got DLSS enabled here and set to quality mode. So let's see what the benchmark looks like on this game. Have I mentioned to you how good this game looks? I'm still really impressed by the graphics. I don't know when this game came out. I think circa 2013 or 2015, maybe something like that. It's been a few years for sure, but this game was very, very impressive. Or maybe 2018. Was it as late as 2018? I'm just going to check on my phone here. When did this game release? Yeah, 2018. I was finally right. <laughs> For a 2018 game, the graphics on this game looks amazing. So five years later, it's still bringing GPUs to their knees, maybe. Yeah, so we can see there that 4060 in this Razer Blade 18 is pegged to 80 watts. It does not go above that. There may be a blip here and there where it does. But I'm assuming this is probably artificially limited so that they can drive you up to the higher price models with the 4080 and the 4090. Don't get the 4070 this year. Skip it. The delta between 4060 and 4070 is just so little. It isn't worth it. Uh, the, on the plus side, this laptop in balanced mode runs fairly quiet. So as I'm running this game here and I've been testing for quite a bit, the fans are audible but very, very low noise. So they are not annoying at all. <clears throat> oh, Arthur's got a bloody forehead this time. <laughs> if you run this punch mark as many times as I have, you'll realize that sometimes he tramples a lady as he's making his getaway from robbing that store on his horse. Other times he gets bloodied halfway through. It's, it's a little bit unique every time. Just subtle, but still unique. Looks like he's got a gunshot wound to his back. <laughs> yeah, cool carriage though. And off into the sunset you go, Mr. Morgan. Okay. 61 FPS average, 140 max, and minimum of 28. 
All right, I'll be right back with the same benchmark, but without DLSS this time. Let's see what the rasterization performance is of this 4060. It seems to be pinned to 80 watts, not really going above that. That is the performance level you're going to get from this laptop. All right, let's jump into the settings here. We'll turn off DLSS and then see how the 4060 in this Razer Blade 18 for 2023 performs without any kind of magic help from algorithms to help smooth things out. Okay, let's run the benchmarks, please. Yes. Have you found the gameplay in this game to be slow or as slow as I have? I felt that this was probably one of the slowest games to play. I've played in a long time. GTA 4 was quite fun. I, I liked playing that game back in 2013 or maybe even older than that. I don't remember now. But uh, Grand Theft Auto V was also fun. I loved the opening scenes. The first hour or so of gameplay of that game felt literally like playing in a Hollywood movie. Big budget Hollywood movie. Um, played that game quite a lot. I also own it on multiple, <laughs> multiple, multiple systems. So I have it on my console and I also have it on my PC. I originally played it on PS4, then played it later on PS5 with all of the updates and the new texture packs. Uh, and finally, I own it on PC as well. Are there games you own multiple copies of on multiple systems? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, you can see here that the RAM usage on this device is, is really hitting that 16 gigabyte limit. Of course, because the RAM is upgradable on this device, you could grab a 32 gigabyte kit of 5600 megahertz RAM DDR5, throw it in there and you'll get a lot more breathing room. That's one thing I, I, I'm kind of feeling a little bit let down by Razer is that, you know, considering the price of this laptop, this is a $4,000 Canadian laptop with a 4060 GPU in it. The least you could have done is thrown in 32 gigabytes of RAM. I mean, come on. The amount of greed with these corporations is just unreal. 32 gigabyte kit would have cost you $100, not even that, because you would have bought it as an OEM at wholesale prices. So I don't know what the wholesale prices of RAM are, but the 32 gigabyte kit, even if it was at retail price, you'd be paying 200 Canadian dollars. You could certainly have budgeted that into the $4,000 price of this laptop. Unbelievable. Because now that means I have to go and buy a separate kit, pay for it out of pocket. My 16 gigabyte kit becomes pretty much useless. I'll have to sell it to, for pennies on the dollar on you know, some uh, third party site or maybe Facebook marketplace. Add another $200 on top of the cost of this laptop already. And then go through the hassle of opening it up, you know, and getting into the chassis and then replacing the RAM. If I get a brand new laptop that costs this much, I want it to be just open and go. No need to do anything. 77 watts, 78. Yeah, I think this is artificially limited to 4060, uh, excuse me, 4060 to 80 watts because I've seen reviews on other laptops where the 4060 can stretch its legs all the way up to 140 watts. That's the max TGP that's been set by NVIDIA, but of course it's left up to every manufacturer to tune and select the TGP for their device and based on their thermal solution. Still very close to 60 FPS, and because it's a G-Sync display, you don't get any screen tearing or any weird artifacting like that. It just looks smooth. Everything is just very, very smooth, even though right now it's dipping down to the low 50s. Still very smooth gameplay. In my previous run of that benchmark, as you headed out that door, that lady was not in the way. <laughs> there is a little bit of variability to the NPCs in this game. If you rerun the benchmark again and again, you'll notice that. It's, it's quite funny since I've run this benchmark now dozens of times.
49 FPS there, dipping below 50 for a brief moment with the particle physics from that uh, dynamite stick. Oh, looks like one of the horses didn't die that time. <laughs> Alright, 51 FPS, so we've dropped from right around 60 to 51, so that's a 10 FPS drop without DLSS. It is a fairly significant, I would say, improvement. That's about 20 to maybe 25% performance increase with DLSS turned on. It brings it right to that 60 FPS sweet spot. I would play this game with it turned on because there seems to be no visual degradation of quality or whatsoever. So I'll be back in the next one.